Okay, this is going to be an example problem with uh, Newton's law of gravity. <clears throat> so we want to watch this. To get an idea of generally how to use the formula, um, I'm going to require that when we do this formula, we always do three steps. Uh, so we were taking notes on this uh, fourth marking period the other day. And so should look pretty familiar to us. Really shouldn't be anything too mind blowing. So, this is the gravity formula. All right. Um, first step in any one of these problems, as always, is to just write out our formula F sub G, which is the force of gravity, equals the gravitational constant G multiplied by the large mass multiplied by the small mass divided by the distance between their centers squared. Take note, this is <coughs> the distance between the centers of the masses. What that means is if you have two spheres separated by some distance, it's not the distance just to their edges, from here to here, it's actually the distance right to their centers. So this distance. So you'd have to add in, we could call this r sub 1, plus the radius of that sphere, which we could call r sub 2, and then the radius of this sphere, which we could call r sub 3. Uh, all those, this one plus that, plus this one would equal the r value that you need to use in your formula up here. All right, so keep in mind that it's the distance to the object's centers of gravity or centers of mass. Uh, g, we know, is the gravitational constant. This number is always going to be the same, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th, and it's newtons uh, times meters squared per kilograms squared, and this part of the term is all going to cancel. So you don't really have to worry too much about it. <clears throat> but you do have to worry about the number. You have to know it. And the masses will come from the problem as well as the separating distance. Don't forget to square it. That's really important. <clears throat> all right, so the second step with any one of these problems is what I like to call IDV, or identify the variables. Uh, F sub G, the force of gravity, is what we're looking for. Duh. So that's going to be a question mark. And we know the units for that are going to be in Newtons. Okay, because like we said above, everything else is going to cancel over here, leaving us with just Newtons there. So solving for the force of gravity between two objects, we're just going to keep it simple. We're always just going to do two body problems. Although you could do more than two body problems, like three, four, five, or whatever, it just gets very complicated. So we're just going to stick with simple two body problems. Uh, next variable, gravitational constant. Again, we know 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th newtons meters squared, kilograms squared. And you don't have to write all this out. In fact, if you want to just not write that each time, I'm fine with that. That's the only number that I'll allow you to not put units on. However, any other number uh, that can have units must have units. So make sure you note that, that any number uh, or value or quantity or what have you that can must have units. Got to have units. Okay? Large mass, small mass, and then R. These three values are going to come from the problem. Well, we haven't even specified a problem yet, so why don't we go ahead. Uh, yesterday, I think I did a problem with basically a box, okay, some kind of a cube, and uh, three-dimensional triangle here. So 
let's just say that this has a mass of 10 kilograms and this has a mass of 5 kilograms and they're separated by a distance of 1 meter uh, to their centers. Just keep that in mind. <coughs> okay, uh, so we can go ahead and plug these values in over here just to identify them. 10 kilograms, 5 kilograms, and then bring the 1 meter over here. R is always going to be measured in meters. So if you're given a distance in kilometers, you're going to have to convert. And you should know the conversion factor already between meters and kilometers because your prefix kilo equals 1,000. So if you have one kilometer, you have 1,000 meters. Okay, so one kilometer equals 1,000 meters. So that'll help you convert. Um, now we have all the variables we need. Uh, to go ahead and go back to our formula, substitute and solve, which is the third step. So I'll extend the page a little bit more, write our third step here. I'm going to rewrite the formula, but instead of putting in the G, M, M, and R, I'm actually going to put in those values of 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. I'm going to leave out the units just because they're a pain in the butt to write and they're all going to cancel anyway. Uh, 10 kilograms from the first mass. 5 kilograms second mass, all divided by r squared, and the distance between the centers was 1 meter squared, which we know is just going to be 1 on the bottom. So really, this problem is super easy. It's just a multiplication on the top, and we're done. Okay, so force of gravity is going to equal, let's get a calculator out. <coughs> We can take uh, 6.67, and on, on this calculator, which comes with the computer, uh, let's see, where is it? We're going to have to do EXP, and you're going to do the change of sign to negative uh, 11. Is that going to work? Nope, that's not what we want to do. Cancel that. 6.67. Nope, cancel that. 6.67, where is it? Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Pretty sure it's the EXP. And, oh, you just got to change the sign. There we go. So change the sign on that to make it the negative 11. There we go. And that's going to be uh, multiplied. We should have parentheses before that. Uh, when you're working with all these big numbers in scientific notation, you have to use parentheses. This is a point that I'm going to really harp on when we get back together. But parentheses first, 6.67, uh, EXP, change the sign, negative 11, close parentheses. It'll change it, but we're still going with the problem. So that's got to be multiplied by 10, and then multiplied again by 5 equals, we know it's just going to be divided by 1 on the bottom because 1 squared is 1, so we actually don't even have to do that. And that's a really small number, so we're going to have to put that in scientific notation. Uh, looks like we got to move this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 times to get the decimal to where we want it to be. 3 point, what was that? 3.335. And We'll always just cut it off at the hundredths place, so the second decimal place, times 10 to the negative ninth newtons. There's your answer for that problem. So you can see that the force of gravity between two relatively small masses uh, that are close together is super, super small. The force of gravity between uh, any normal two bodies is really small. You have to, talk, you have to deal with masses that are on planetary scales and stellar scales to actually have noticeable gravitational forces. All right, noticeable on our um, scale anyway. Okay, so that's how to do a real simple problem. They get a little bit more complicated, especially when your quantities, uh, like your masses and your distances, start to be written in scientific notation terms themselves. So get ready for that because you're going to have a big long mess up here 
with three terms in scientific notation, just like this one is. So you definitely are going to have to use parentheses. Have to use these parentheses in your calculator to separate your quantities. And don't forget to square the bottom. Everybody always forgets to square the bottom, and that usually makes our answers wrong. Okay, so you can watch this over and over again as many times as you wish to go through what I did. Each of your problems has to have these three steps, and you should be uh, copying the problems and drawings into your notebook and then working through the three steps, which are identify the variable, step one, identify, I'm sorry, identify the formula, step one, identify the variables, and then substitute and solve, which is step three. Okay? And uh, hopefully that'll help you guys as you go through your practice problems today. Good luck, and I'm going to stop recording now.